The show dedicated to inspiring women to identify and be confident in their worth and their value. Do you want to know how to go from being a service-based business to launching a product? Well, that's our show today is with Daniela Bell, who has done just that. I'm your host, Dr. Courtney Baker, and I believe when women are empowered to know their confidence and their worth and their value, we will truly achieve gender equality. Are you a female entrepreneur looking for motivation and inspiration to grow your business? You found the right channel. I have grown my business from nothing, completely nothing, to being a multi-million dollar enterprise, and I want to help you. Conquering the Glass Ceiling will not only empower you, but every single week we will bring you key insights and ideas from women who have done just that and... They are entrepreneurs who are inspiring and amazing, and be sure to subscribe and like and comment on the videos. And in a moment, you and I are going to be joined by Daniela Bell, a celebrity makeup artist, an entrepreneur, a mom, a creator, and an overall incredible individual. She's the founder of a successful service-based business as a makeup artist and a hairstylist and has launched a new lash line, a mink lash line. Daniela is going to share with us her journey as a girl from Mexico City to now a celebrity makeup artist and entrepreneur in Dallas. And she's going to share with us her inspiration and how she's overcome her challenges But first, I want to say thank you to our sponsor who doesn't know they're our sponsor. What a burger. (laughs) I am so excited to have Daniela Bell with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, You are just, tell us your background and how you got here and on your journey. Well, so I moved to the U.S. 10 years ago from Mexico City. Uh, I was born and raised in Mexico. Um, I just always had a dream to just move to the U.S. because my aunt and some of my family members used to live here. So we'll come like on the, you know, the holidays and whatnot and spend some time here. So I always pictured myself living in a city bigger than what I was. And not that Dallas is bigger than Mexico City, but the whole, you know, experience and everything was just a bigger, a bigger thing for me. So... I just always uh, envision myself being somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how it all started, just with a dream. Yes. Oh, and tell us, so 10 years ago, Mm -hmm. and you got here, and then what? So I got here, and I graduated college because my dad said to me when I was 21, he's like, you are not going to go anywhere till you bring me your title, that you are, you know, a choreographer or a, a dancer or whatever you're going to go. Because I went to school for uh, at, a, at a beauty beauty art school to be a dancer. And so I uh, I wanted to be a choreographer. I always wanted to be the creative side of everything. Uh-huh. So that's what I did. I um, came to my dad and said, hey, you know, here it is. I'm moving to Dallas. And he's like, what? Like, <laughs> are you serious? Oh, no, you're not. Yeah, he's like, uh, you're 21, like, slow your roll. And I was like, well, you know what? I just, like, I was just ready. You know, I always have been a little bit more mature for my age. Like, even my, my older sister said, no, you know what? You, you go on by yourself. Like, I'm not, I can come with you. And I'm like, come with me. And she just didn't want to come. So I was uh-huh. like, okay. So um, I had a friend, um, and she, like, totally opened the door for me to come to, to move in with her. Um, I lived with her for three months, and she told me, Daniela, I am moving with my boyfriend, and you're on your own. 
basically. And um, so find a way. And I'm just like, okay, I'm an immigrant. Okay, first of all, I came with my tourist visa. And I'm like, okay, like I decided to stay. But I'm like, if this doesn't happen in three more months, I'm going back. Because I still have that, you know, that slot of going back to Mexico if I needed to. But I just always felt like, you know, growing up with my, with my dad specifically, he was really strong like really strict with us and be like you cannot come back you know like th if you come back you're gonna be a failure so i was like okay so <laughs> i can come back oh. so that always like set in the back of my head and that always in a way empowered me and pushed me to like i have to do something with my life i have to be someone i'm coming from from mexico to the u.s and i always hear this the american dream so yeah. i was like i am gonna be the American, the next American dream. Like I'm gonna make this happen. <laughs> so I moved out of my friend's house to um, one of my cousins that was living here. But really, that's all I had left because all of my other family members have moved out out of the city. Mm. So you know, it was. It, it's always been such an experience. I was actually talking to my mom yesterday about like how it all started, and she's like crying because of course she had no clue all the things that I went through but um you know I never really wanted to worry them or tell them anything just because I was just like I got this yeah. you know and definitely you know it's all about like being confident in yourself and believe that you can do things I I was really afraid at the beginning I'm not gonna lie I was like I can't believe I'm doing this you know and then my friend is basically giving me a timeline like I have three months to get out of her house oh sink or swim <laughs> yeah and so I was like you know what uh so yeah I started teaching dance but that wasn't really giving me enough of an income and of course you have to pay bills, right? So yeah. you're on your own. And I'm like, that's not that's not gonna do it. So I was like, okay, what else? So I started getting like little jobs here and there and just whatnot. But I always, you know, my, my thing was, well, I am a, an illegal alien. Like I have to like find a way or I'll have to go back home. Yeah. And so I met my now husband uh, and we were dating for like about six months or so. No, actually three months. <laughs> Take it back. Three months. <laughs> and so I minor I, details. Yeah, minor details. <laughs> I said I'm gonna go back home because I need to fix my visa so that you know I can work here legally because I don't want to be here working illegally. This yeah. is this is just bad, you know. I was like, I'm just gonna go back home. So um, he's like, No, don't go back home. And I said, Well, I don't have a choice, honey. Like I have to go back home. <laughs> and uh, my my dad was like, No, just like get a fix. Come here. And so my now husband, he like totally said, no, let's just get married. What can we do? And I said, well, it's either I get married or, you know, and I, of course, I don't want to push that because we just started a relationship. Yeah. And he's like, no, stay here. We're going to get married. And he so, is such a cutie. And he's the best. <laughs> he's the best. Like, I, and he adores you. I know. I, I think um, I can honestly say to, you, say to you that half of my success, if not more than that, has been because of him. Because of his, you know, he believes in me, yeah. has pushed me and allowed me to change careers. Because while we were already, you know, married and everything, I said, you know what? I just don't want to be a um uh, a dancer anymore so a dance instructor mm -hmm. i want to do something else i want to be a makeup artist and he's like are you crazy like denny like and you know we're young he's uh -huh. like denny we have we have bills to pay honey like there's it's no time to be changing careers <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> you're already old like get your life <laughs> tell us about some of those early career struggles you know at the beginning i um when i started being a makeup artist i i wasn't of course near what i was you know what i'm now but uh i uh i had some people in my life that always kind of like helped me out to like find a way um and sometimes i didn't listen you know i was like okay let me just do my thing okay i gotta i gotta find it on my own but i always feel like um i always kind of like trying to step back and talk to these people that helped me from the beginning um you know it wasn't i wasn't making as much money that mm -hmm. was like the real thing I wasn't um and then you know I was investing so much in makeup and I was like well I have all this makeup but I'm not really gaining clients so that was my biggest struggle building my clientele mm -hmm. and again back to my husband he always pushed me like this is a way you can get clients like always giving me ideas of do this do that you know and 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 it was just a, a matter of stop sleeping because I was a bear. I used to love sleeping. I was a bear. <laughs> I, I, truth, right. I love to sleep. Uh, that you was like my favorite thing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was, he's like, no, yeah. like, get your 
let it want to work, you know, and, and find your clients. This is ways to, yeah, this is ideas. So I will follow ideas that he'll give me and that totally make it work for me. Uh-huh. Um, I got my work uh, permit. So I started working legally. Yes. <laughs> so I was like, nice. Uh, my first gig as a makeup artist was at MAC Cosmetics. Oh. And um, I loved working at MAC because I thought it was like my dream job. But then I, I hated to have to work for someone. I was like, this is not for me. You know, like I... True entrepreneur. Yeah, I was like, I love being here and I love that I get to talk to people. I learned a lot, another language working at, at Mac. I learned Portuguese because all these oh. people from Brazil will come and no one will understand anything that they were saying. And I was like, oh, I know what you're saying because I used to watch this blogger, <laughs> this makeup artist <laughs> that only speak Portuguese. And I'm like, I understand every single thing. So makeup related, I understand everything. So I was like, okay, fine. So that was a really good thing that uh-huh. I did. So um, funny. And I love languages. I, 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 you know, I love communicating with different people and whatnot. Uh, in high school, I learned French. And then I was like, okay, I'm like the language queen over here. <laughs> <laughs> so that helped me with my sales. And so I always have the top of the sales at Mac. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm, I'm really good at sales, but I'm not even trying to sell. It was just one of the things that people will come to me, ask me for, you know, hey, uh, how do you, how do I do this? Like, can you teach me? And I'm like, of course. And like, I would love to teach him because, again, I was a choreographer. I love teaching. That was mm-hmm. my thing. So I was like, let's do it. So I will just teach him how to do things, and they will buy every single thing that I'll show him. And it wasn't intentionally like, oh, yeah, use this and this and this and this. You need 10 products. No, it was key things that I knew it was going to change their lives yeah. and they will buy it. And yeah. that was, yeah, that was success working on Mac. <laughs> uh-huh. So comment below if you have your early career struggles that you can relate to that. Just that whole, I don't know how to get this started. Um, so how long have you been in business? Uh, my business has been open for five years. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, I had a partner before and then I just decided to go on my own. It yeah. was the best decision it has been the best decision i've ever made Mm -hmm. um you know partnership is not always for everyone i'm not saying it's a bad thing i think partnering with the right person is always key um but partnership is marriage yeah that 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 was definitely what it was i was married yes and (laughs) and i went into business with my partner who i'd known four months and it was it was really it, it it's not for everyone it's not. And, you know, if and and maybe that's kind of something that happened to me a little bit, too. Like, it was kind of a fast move of, oh, I like this person. I, I love her. I think she's my best friend. Yeah. Like, we're opening this together. Yeah. Um, not that, you know, she wasn't. She was a friend. But I was just like, you know what? It was just let's just move on, you know? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, yeah it, was, it was good. So you, I'm super excited. You have gone from a service-based business of makeup and being a, now a celebrity makeup artist, which yeah. is incredible. Um, to and let's talk about that journey yeah. for a second. That was, um, you know, I have this friend of mine. He's her name is Jenny Anchando. Love her to death. She's been my mentor in so many ways. A great friend of mine. A great supporter. Uh-huh. Cheerleader you name it like she's just been there for me and she actually came to me from instagram she found me on instagram and she's like hey uh you know, like, could you do my makeup and i'm like of course but that day that she came to get her makeup done by me i wasn't there so i didn't get to do her makeup my partner did uh-huh. and i was like no like you know i i really want her to do her makeup but you know we were in partnership so it really didn't matter she was gonna get a good job anyway but i reach out to her and say, hey, come back again because I really want to, you know, do your makeup because I feel bad because I was Uh like, it wasn't me and she wanted me. Uh And so she came in. We bonded. Like, we just became, like, friends right away. She was the sweetest person. uh, And she was working for, uh, she was working at Fox 4, so in the news. And so I was like, oh, my gosh, it's amazing. If you ever need me to do your makeup on the news, like, just let me know. And she's like, absolutely. Like, long story short, she allowed me to come to the station, did her makeup. People started, like, dragging attention to me because who is this lady that's doing this, you know, celeb makeup and whatnot? And 
she has just helped me so much. She uh -huh. always, always like loved the way I did her makeup and always like complimented and you know and and just like sent me to her friends. Uh -huh. She starts spreading the word about me with like her circle of friends. Um, of course, her circle of friends was people that was like either in the media or something related to TV. So that was something that helped me out a lot, uh -huh. and I always feel and will feel so grateful for her to like you know try to introduce me to others. And you keep saying this about it's it's your ability to do makeup, but I know that it's more than that, Daniela. It's your <laughs> ability to build relationships and be authentic. Yeah, I think, in, and I appreciate you for saying that. I uh, I think it's really important that you don't see opportunity in people and take the opportunity because you see that they can give you an opportunity. Mm -hmm. It was a genuine thing with me and Jenny. It's always been thank you you know i can't believe you're doing this for me like no one no one has to do anything for you mm -hmm. you know you can be really talented and they can just move on to the next one mm -hmm. but you're right i think we we click we had a relationship right away we we just like bonded as friends you know uh -huh. like i i love her and and she i guess she she loved me <laughs> so, <laughs> well, what's you know, not to love oh you're sweet <laughs> yeah she she helped me a lot um and then i have other friends along the way as i was meeting more people i reached out to another uh host for a TV show in Mo Good Morning Texas. So I reached out to her and I say, hey, if you ever want me to do your makeup, I would love to. And she looked at my work uh -huh. and she's like, I matter of fact, I have an event. Can you do my makeup? I'm like, yes! I was like, yeah, I nailed it! Another TV! <laughs> but <laughs> there's another, an, another nugget that I want to focus on is the fact that you took an opportunity and you had confidence in your abilities and you reached out. Yeah. Instead of waiting for someone to reach out to you, you put yourself out there. And a lot of women specifically um, in my research don't feel comfortable in themselves and would never do that. So kudos yeah. to you. Yeah, it was fun. I um, Like you said, I feel like it, it was like, okay, if this one likes me, then and I was confident on my work from day one. I thought I was the best makeup artist in the world. I was like, you know what? I am the best. True. <laughs> so you have to start there, uh -huh. and of course you have to continue to learn because I knew I didn't know everything, but I always push myself to like go to master classes and learn from the big ones, learn from celebrity makeup artists here and there, and mm -hmm. travel out of the country to try to like mingle with this artist and see what their craft was. And I learned so much, so much just by you know sitting down and just watching other artists doing their craft mm -hmm. um, instead of looking at them as your competition absolutely yeah and, and that was the main thing and it's been the main thing for me i feel like i had a friend candace she used to tell me Janela, there's enough fish in the water absolutely you should never feel like you're competing against other artists and i'm like you're right you know and and it, I started to realize another thing between women in the in the in the makeup artistry business was that women were so catty like I you know like I I don't want you to have that client and like oh that was my client but what are you doing her now if that was my client I'm just like oh okay well it's it was, not just in the makeup artist industry it, yeah as you're well. right in the yeah real world basically yeah. in every single career but I was like it shouldn't be that way. Mm -hmm. And another thing I noticed was that every time I will go to take makeup master classes, every artist that I went to support was a male. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why is this a thing? Why am I going to only see makeup artists that are males? And, mm -hmm. and, and again, it's not to be a feminist or anything, but I'm just like, why is there not a celebrity makeup artist women that I am investing my money in go see? Why? Because you have to you have to feel proud of being a woman and support women. Yes. You know what I mean? And that's what I always say is when women realize that we are playing football. We all have to play football. Yeah. Half of us can't play football while the other half is mad that they, they want to play basketball. Like we need to play on the same team. Yeah. And support one another. And yeah. when we truly do that through having confidence in ourselves, then we will achieve gender equality and right. pay equality because we will we will be confident in ourselves. Yeah. And that's the whole purpose of this show is to empower women to see how other women who have been successful have done it. 
and be able to emulate that and find the confidence in themselves. That's right. And I also feel like every single one of us has such an essence and has a, you know, an individual way to do things. So there's never really competition. The competition, and it's going to sound really, you know, cliche, it's you. Yeah. You, you are the one that know how much you can do and how much more you could do. Mm -hmm. And it's never, you can get inspiration from others, but you have to be true Your to best. yourself and authentic to what you can achieve. Yes. Because every single artist is a different world mm -hmm. and people will come to me and they might not like me. They might like you or by the other way. <laughs> <laughs> not true. <laughs> so, you know, it's just about just just let be and mm -hmm. and and if anything just try to grow mm -hmm. my mom just to say you should always be um uh, encouraging yourself to add not to not to subtract not to subtract from yeah. others yeah like always you know add friends gain friends gain people that it's you know on your team instead of you know losing people yeah. it's never good to lose it's always no. good to earn so yep so now you have created your own lash line and I'm they're amazing they're mink lashes and tell us how this all came about so when I uh, had my other brand my other business partner and everything uh, we um, kind of like wanted to have like our own cosmetic line and do something because we had the studio right so I was like yeah why not and so this came this was born there mm -hmm. like I said uh, yeah let's, let's you know let's find a product that we can retail that all of our clients um, want to you know or need basically and so m lashes has always have always been like the one item that I know when I'm doing makeup. If I put lashes on a client, the whole chain, the whole body just like takes over and acts like a totally different person. Yeah. It is insane. And I absolutely love that because it's just so much more confidence. You know, there's women that come with like little to no lashes. The moment that I put lashes on them, I'm just like, oh, whoa. <laughs> what happened to the woman that was sitting there <laughs> a minute ago? <laughs> so it's just a great item. And uh -huh. my brand, I want it to be all about empowering. And even in my, my, my slogan, it's empowering you through beauty. Like mm -hmm. I want people that come, sit on a chair, trust what I'm going to do on her, on them. And then once I'm done and I pop these lashes on, you will understand the why of the beauty side of everything, yeah. you know? Yeah. Comment below if you have launched your own product. I want to hear about it and support that as well. So tell us, and, and I want to talk about these. Um, tell us about each one. And she has incredibly gifted the um, naming of each of her lashes to one of her friends. Yeah. So again, every friend that has been there for me will have a lash style. I promise that. Oh, <laughs> can, can so, we? Yeah. Let's see. I'll um, talk about uh, this this first one. Actually, let me start with this one. Okay. Yeah, because this is Jenny. So J Jenny is how it all started. <laughs> uh -huh. And it's a beautiful, it's really natural, uh, natural, um, shape and again th what's good about this lashes is that you can reuse them 35 times so it's not the typical lash that you will buy at the drugstore put on and then toss right and they're like six dollars a piece five or around there these are thirty dollars but you actually get a lot for your box because you can reuse them so many times so, so it's less than a dollar a a time that you put them on right. yeah and they're mink so what i like about my brand is that and I have tried all their mink lashes, and that's how I, like, started getting in love with it. But they, when you look down, you can see, like, a shiny, if, like a shiny film. Mm -hmm. And I did not like that. Mine don't shine. They don't shine. <laughs> it's beautiful. real mink, and they're uh, cruelty-free. I was like, I want to I wanna make sure that they're not, you know, harming an animal because mm -hmm. that's not good. So yeah. they're cruelty-free. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that about them. But, yeah, this is Jenny. Jenny, again, as, as I told you guys, is... Uh, from Jenny and Chando, so I got inspired by her. Uh -huh. And then I have Melissa. Melissa, uh, I have two friends named Melissa's, and so I, I thought this was like the best thing because I'm like, cool, now I get to kill, you know, kill two birds with one stone and, <laughs> and whatnot. Uh, Melissa Plaskov, um, 
she was a, she's always been there for me. I've she's one of the friends that I have not known for so long, but I feel like I've known her for my whole entire life. Uh -huh. Again, someone that uh, mentors me, empowers me, believes in me. And I don't want to start crying because I probably will. But uh, <laughs> Melissa, um, I told her that one time. I said, you, see, I want to cry. <laughs> it's okay. We uh, have makeup. I know. <laughs> we can touch it up. You don't um, want me to touch it up. but <laughs> yeah, That would be probably, well, maybe you can do it. No, job. no, no. Maybe you can. Um, as she told me, you know, besides she's been helping me so much this whole entire process, um, I told her one time, no matter what happened, the fact that you believe in me and tell me the things that you, <laughs> I want to cry. It's okay. Tell me the things that you say and, and just the way she's being with me in general. I'm just so thankful. And we, that's the thing that I, when we have those friends that we connect at a heart level. Yeah. It, it was definitely it makes, that with her. Um, yeah. It was, it's, it's just that it's always been nothing. I'm not asking you for anything. It's just take, take, Support. take. And I'm like, I'm not, first of all, I'm not used to that because yeah. I always have to chase the carrot. You know yeah. what I mean? But when you have those people that just open their hearts to you, their uh -huh. homes to you and just be like, hey, you know what? Here, I have this idea. So what are you going to do? What is your plan? But this and this and this. And I'm just like, why is this woman? Uh -huh. trying to help me and this is just a proof to with us. no strings attached that's right and it was just to me it was just like there are good women mm -hmm. out there and i have been lucky enough Courtney, through my whole journey as an artist and since i've been in dallas to always bump into good people mm -hmm. and the ones that i have realized that were in the people that i wanted to be around i have been i have i have let go Good. Never in a bad term. Just I'll just quit talking. Yeah. Let's just move on. Um, but the ones that have been there for me, I mean, I they know who they are, and yeah. I always make it really clear because I always make sure that I tell them how mm -hmm. much they mean to me. And mm -hmm. this is just a little token of my appreciation for for them. Uh -huh. uh, Melissa again has been amazing, uh -huh. an amazing friend, and I get emotional with her specifically because she's just a heart. Yeah. <laughs> she walks. <laughs> it's just the heart. It's just the heart. She, yeah. And so, you know. Yeah. That's the reason why I named this. So now, like, my makeup's probably ruined. No, okay. you're fine. You um, look, I mean, she looks amazing. You guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's Melissa. And then Melissa Rycroft uh -huh. is another uh, of my friends that I've uh, been working with her for the last, the past year. We've been working together. She works, uh, she was work doing the morning show that I was doing makeup and hair at uh, mm -hmm. every morning from Monday to Friday from 3 to 5 a.m. I'll be there. 3 so, to 5 a.m. I have not been sleeping, guys. I used to be a bear. Now I don't sleep if I sleep four hours. If I sleep four hours, it's a lot. Uh, but it's okay because you can you start seeing the earning of everything in general, mm -hmm. like family-wise, uh, business and everything just grows because you're really putting so much effort into things and you're, you're you know, dedicating yourself into something that you want to build. And so... That mm -hmm. takes work. That takes non-sleeping. Yeah. So. And if you can relate to the juggle of the struggle, comment below because we we understand, believe me. Yeah. And, and we would like to hear about that. So, yeah. Melissa Rycroft was uh -huh. another one of my really amazing friends. She's been an amazing friend to me. Uh, she's been pushing my brand, pushing my name. I have gotten so many business from her because of the things that she posted in social media. She uh -huh. don't have to post, but she does it uh -huh. to help me out. And, you know, those are things that I always will thank her for. And yeah. this is also for her. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, we have Carolina, which is my last uh, style that I want to talk about. I have new ones coming out, which I'm really excited. Uh, but this one, it's actually, you know, through my career, I always have been wanting to give back. I was just about to ask you yeah. about that. So, and that's an important factor for me. So, tell us how you give back. You know, I um, I get uh, in touch with my friends that are into the the charity community, and they always be giving. You know, they're always giving to different charities and whatnot. And I have, you know, Jenny, that she's a philanthropist, and mm -hmm. other friends of mine that are philanthropists, and they always encourage me to give. 
I feel like no, a lot of people hold back on giving because they think, oh, well, I don't have as much as that one does, so why would I give the little dollars that I have? And I can honestly tell you one thing. You don't necessarily have to have a lot. You can always give a little from the little that you have, and that little is going to multiply three times for you. And that's that's a proof because I've lived over that. I, this These years that I've been doing that, I can see and every time you I give, even if it's just something, you know, really small, it just comes back triple. So that's a good thing to do, guys. Always give back. And yeah. it, don't look don't look at who. Just give. Yeah. yeah. What, and, and what I always tell my kids, especially because they're always worried about what the other one's doing. And I said, you know, who's worried about you? If you're worried about her, yeah. you and you know, if you just look in the mirror and that's the only person you can control, and if you're if you're doing what you need to do in your alignment with with that, you don't have to anything else to worry about. Yeah, yeah. So uh, a good one of my clients and best friends, Caroline Craddock, um, she uh, well, she started being my client first because I reached out to her and I like, hey. What's up? <laughs> Did you want me to do your makeup? <laughs> hey, and what's she's up? Like, yeah, that's fine. Do my makeup. So I came and we. I love her, of course, and uh, I started to be like her her go to makeup artist. And we've been traveling around and we've been doing a lot of cool things together. One of the biggest things that we've done together is this partnership. This this lash uh, style. It's named Carolina. and it also has Caroline's uh, signature with me because this is uh, a partnership that we uh, did together where we are donating 30% of the proceeds to Kids Kids Foundation. So Kids Kids Foundation was um, was uh, f founded by her Kids daddy. daddy. Uh -huh. And so uh, now she's following with that legacy, which I'm really proud of her because I personally have been around these kids that they help. And I cannot tell you, like, you cannot stand there without crying. Mm -hmm. Because, I, and I get emotional, but it, it's just, it's just mm -hmm. crazy. Now that I'm a mom, I'm just like, I can only imagine having a kid that it's, you know, under life-threatening conditions or, or living a life with, you know, with life support or things like that, that are just like, you can't, you know what I mean? Like, it's mm -hmm. just, it's just crazy to see it. But when you're there and you're living the moment and you realize what, what you have and, and what others you know, have, and it's just, you start comparing, and you're just like, okay, no, this is not, you have to some somehow contribute, and I feel like the fact that I'm friends with her, and I can help her supporting her, you know, her foundation in a way, because I have a product that, who knows, it might take off into bigger things, I will definitely like to, you know, to donate, and, yeah. and, and have something that people feel good about buying, because besides the fact that you're saving when you buy the, the lashes, you're actually supporting a, 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 a foundation, you know, uh -huh. a charity. So I think um, this is a really special, a really special product. Yeah. yeah. They're, and they're, I, all of them are beautiful and amazing. And, and just the, the fact that you have them from the heart makes yeah. it even that much more um, special. Yeah. So I hate that our time is over today, but I have learned so much. And thank you so much for of being course. with us. I'm sorry I was a reaver. No, you're, you're not apologize. Um, but exciting news. Daniela has a bonus for us and a giveaway for our listeners. So tell us about that. Yeah, uh, I think I send it to you. Yes. I, I don't want to like quote something else that I don't remember. No, so no, was it was... That, um, it, you do the. You were talking about the eyebrows. Oh yeah, so I do microblading. So microblading is like a semi-permanent tattoo mm -hmm. that I've been doing for over three years, almost three years, and I've been getting, uh, you know, bigger and bigger in Dallas for that particular service. And I love doing that. I love making people feel like they have brows again. So yeah. uh, our service is normally five hundred and eighty dollars. You get a hundred dollars off. Uh -huh. If you mention this podcast, say yes, this say, video, say conquer, this girl. conquer, yeah, conquer, <laughs> <laughs> and so you get your discount. Uh huh, uh huh, and um, we can also discount on makeup services. Did mm -hmm. I quote? Did you, yes. did I give you something? Uh -huh. Well, how much was it? Uh, that one was thirty dollars off. There you go. So let's just make it forty. Just okay, because just because we're just, we're just in a very good mood today. 
Because <laughs> it's Thursday and we're conquering. It's Thursday, yeah. Come by. Uh, if you want any hairstyle or makeup service, you get $40 off. And tell them how they can get in touch with you. So you can uh, check us out on uh, social media. So our handles are Daniela Bell Beauty. And Daniela is D A N I E L A, not two L's. Just one L. And then uh, my website as well, DanielaBellBeauty.com. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, we're going to be starting some YouTube soon. So it yeah. should be Daniela Bell Beauty. Everything should be Daniela Bell Beauty. So you guys can, can take a look at that. Great. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Courtney Baker and I'm here with Belinda Salinas. She's the operations manager. Isn't that your title? Yes. <laughs> At Kids Care. Um, Belinda, tell me what is the characteristic of your favorite boss? <laughs> of course, you know. No, 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 no. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but really. <laughs> uh, best characteristic of my favorite boss. I think I have to say, uh, just over the years I've been with Kids Kids, I've been here for really for a really long time and I've had a few. Um, I would say for me it would be someone that I could that that really just listens um, and has really good communication and is just um, open and, and really just honest of what's going on in the company. That's always been a plus for me and huge, just um, big communication and uh, laying everything out on the table. I think that's the key to kind of knowing uh, from the top down how to run a business. So putting your communication out there. Yes. Very good. Well, yes. thank you so much, Belinda. She started as our first receptionist. <laughs> God, nearly like 14 years ago. I know. It's been We did it's good. Been <laughs> it's been long. It's been long. Listen to her. <laughs> All right. Over to you. All right, Belinda gave us some really good information, but one of the things that she said was tra transparent communication is key. And transparent communication is really necessary, but it is not easy. So one of the recommendations on the prescription to lead is to, uh, we all have communication that's tough. So I recommend the book, Crucial Conversations, for those conversations that are really hard to have, that you just don't know how to have. That is a great um, resource to help you with those conversations. So now you know exactly what Daniela did to overcome her obstacles. She kept putting one foot in front of the other and getting out of bed and trying to make it happen. And look at what she did. She did it. She is conquering her own glass ceiling. So if you want to know, if you want a free strategy guide to conquer your own glass ceiling, go to my website, CourtneyBaker.com. Know you. And I will give you a free strategy guide so you can start conquering your own glass ceiling. So if you like the video, please comment below and like and share and support us on social media. And that's all we have today. So I appreciate the, the support and we will see you next week.